Good morning, everybody. Glad to have you here today. Go ahead and like and share the post, and then, uh, if you will, we'll grab a Bible and we'll go back to the 133rd Psalm. And uh, we are moving slow through this psalm, uh, deliberate. Um, I just, uh, I love this psalm, and uh, we'll be sure we get uh, the meaning. I think it's so, uh, so necessary, so needed. Uh, in Christianity today, the idea of unity, working together with like-minded believers, and that is the key, like-minded believers. We don't lower our uh, standards, we don't change our doctrine or our teaching uh, just for the sake of unity, um, but um, of those who uh, have a, uh, a biblical uh, theology, biblical doctrine, uh, again, over the issues that matter. We, um, we can work around some things, um, but the, the key issues of, uh, of the faith, that we have unity. And David has uh, given us, uh, here he's given us uh, two examples. Uh, yesterday we uh, looked at um, the oil uh, that uh, would be poured on the priest head and uh, the symbol of power uh, in the church when there is unity. Now in verse 3, uh, he says, uh, As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. And uh, this, this clause, uh, this uh, piece of uh, verse 3, um, says, uh, again, is... Uh, continuing to talk about uh, the response of God uh, to unity, uh, that when the people are, uh, when God's people come together uh, in unity, uh, that God will bless them, that God will bring about good things, and when he says here, as the dew of Hermon, as the dew descended upon the mountains, um, he, he's saying that uh, God's people will be blessed. They will bear fruit uh, as if uh, the dew uh, had uh, come down, uh, or, uh, had fallen uh, as uh, from Mount Hermon uh, and caused uh, growth, caused um, uh, the, the heavy dew would uh, cause the the growth and um, the the uh, the the tribes and um, it is uh, several symbols really going on there uh, is the the um, flourishing the uh, the uh, provision of the dew uh, but again it is another um, it's another example. Uh, of uh, the unity uh, of uh, the Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, again, uh, Mount Hermon uh, was uh, the tallest mountain uh, in the area. And um, oftentimes it would have uh, snow uh, up on top. Uh, and uh, because of its height, uh, the dew would come uh, and form uh, on the mountain uh, when many times other areas uh, were, uh, were dry and uh, therefore were bearing uh, no fruit. And um, David is drawing um, a, a spiritual uh, parallel for us here uh, that when we are in unity, uh, God's blessings come on us, making us um, like the fruitful area uh, where the moisture uh, comes and that they are uh, blessed and uh, refreshed. And so again, it's the same point uh, that he had made in verse 2, uh, just with a different um, analogy, uh, that unity uh, brings... Um, causes uh, the blessings of God to be on God's people, to be on uh, 
uh, on, on the churches. Uh, when we are together, when we are united, uh, we will produce fruit. We will have uh, be blessed. Um, and uh, the logical um, opposite side of that would be when there is no unity, uh, there will be no blessing and there will be no fruit, um, which perhaps describes or explains uh, the condition of the church um, in 2022, uh, that due to a lack of unity, due to the, um, to the, to the disagreement, the battling, the, um, the, the grief, the friction, um, over oftentimes immaterial things, um, colors of carpet and those kinds of things, and, some of you have heard me talk about the church that was growing and, and building a new building. And as they were finishing up their new building, uh, it came time to choose and to, uh, to, between uh, to put chalkboards in the rooms. And they ended up having a fight of whether to buy green chalkboards or black chalkboards. Um, uh, churches have split over uh, where to set the thermostat, uh, temperature in the building. Um, which you know, which particular uh, songbook to to buy? It's amazing uh, some of the silly stuff that has caused uh, division, conflict in the church. And David is making it clear to us here that when that happens, uh, we are erecting a barrier uh, to the blessing uh, of God and. Uh, it's a strong challenge for us this morning, a strong reminder. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want my actions or my uh, decisions uh, to be the reason that there would be disunity, uh, conflict in the church that ultimately would lead to, uh, to, a, to a, a hindrance of the blessing of God uh, on the work uh, of the church. Now, let me let me run down a little quick side road just for a moment. There are times I, I have seen churches uh, who have um, gotten into trouble on the other end of things because there was no conflict. And what I mean by that, um, and we've seen this especially probably in the last 25, 30 years, uh, where churches many times have begun to drift uh, to the left, become more liberal, uh, um, deny the, the authority and the inspiration of Scripture, for example, and no one would stand up and say anything. No one would push back. They allowed it to happen. Well, that's just as dangerous. Um, and, and so we need to, uh, f in our desire for unity, um, we can't um, sacrifice the truth, and so there's a, uh, a balancing uh, balancing act to uh, to be had. Uh, what what's important is that we're sure uh, that the thing we're standing up for uh, is a primary, is a major issue, not just uh, a personal preference. And uh, so you think about that that fine line between unity uh, and again standing up for the truth. Uh, but um, unity brings blessing uh, into the church. Have a great day, and we will see you back here tomorrow morning.